Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we're gonna to be doing another installment of the weekly meta breakdown. Uh, what we do on these are look at the top performing decks for the week in a particular format on MTG Arena. This one happens to be traditional, best of three standard, uh, so standard with sideboard. Uh, the best of one video is also up. You can take a look at that. Each week we'll kind of put these out, uh, usually one a day or so. Uh, we'll have Explorer data up this week as well. Uh, there's tournaments and a bunch of untapped data. And speaking of Untapped, that's where we get the data to do these from. So Untapped GG, uh, that you see on the screen right now, it's a companion tool that runs alongside your Arena client, tracks your win rates, uh, deck collections, gives you suggestions for decks to build, uh, what you're missing from wild cards. It's free to get started. The link is in the video description down below if you want to uh, click that, follow through. And then I'll paste all the deck lists in the video uh, description so you could just import those. So we are looking April 28th to May 8th. Uh, platinum to mythic rank, so 27,000 matches. So matches could be two to three games. So that's uh, a decent population size. Uh, could 60-ish to, yeah, probably like 70-ish to like 90,000, somewhere in there. Um, and what we're looking at in terms of the top decks, we have Orzov Control, 62% uh, win rate for this particular one. Uh, so it's like black-white, um, not quite the Blood on the Snow deck, it's kind of mid-rangey, controlly. So you have like the Wedding Announcement, Welcoming Vampire card draw engine. You got some early removal, Portable Hole, Vanishing Verse. You still have your meat hooks in there, but like Spirited Companion cycles itself. It could also be brought back with the Jonjo, which helps you ramp. You have Aspirants that kind of get you ahead on uh, power, like they buff your squad. You have the Legion Angel package in the sideboard, Starheim Unleashed for more angels for the late game. Wandering Emperor that slices dices does everything and anything um, in these decks offense defense just a really good card seeing um, This and Auburn my two favorite cards from the set. I know they're kind of the faces of the set, but they're just really good uh, Elspeth resplendent so plus give just a relevant ability and kind of draw like grow your thing your creature Minus three lets you find like any of these permanents, which is really good and then some Lulths and Amiria called mixed in. You are playing some copies of like creature lines in there. There's some Rafine's Towers, um, mainly for the cycling, but you are seeing some of these decks play Orvar in the sideboard. Orvar is predominantly coming in against the Obnixus deck. If they make you discard it, you can have a copy Orvar or any other kind of permanent on their side of the battlefield. I don't think this is basic land. But yeah, basic plane. So. Really, there's no treasures in this deck, so it's really the only way to cast it is off these blue ones. Um, but you're seldomly actually hard casting Orvar for the matchups that you want it in. Um, in terms of your sideboard package, you have the rest of the Legion Angels, uh, attacks against like big mana decks, sweepers against more creature heavy decks, go blank, duress against control, Raven Feebleman versus Mono White, and then our kind of Emiria versus like runes or heavy uh, non basic decks or like the Jeskai. Uh, Hinata or Dragon or like the Goldspan Lier Storm deck kind of played into there. Uh, we have Jun Midrange. Um, so notably Omnixus's legendary so you make a copy of the, the token with the casualty ability of Omnixus. That token is non-legendary so Eska's Chariot can copy it so you get extra copies there. Uh, you're maximizing on two drops that have three power. Blood Tithe Harvester as well as Tenacious Underdog. I kind of grow it that way. You got Riveteer's Charm for kind of the Soul Shatter effect, as well as kind of get cards uh, that you could play or Exile a Graveyard in a pinch. Uh, this version, like the standard version, tends to just be, um, you know, Rakdos Splash Chariot for the most part, or that like Riveteer's kind of seven damage card. Uh, this runs a little bit heavier on green. Um, so we're seeing like the Binding of the Old Gods in there. We're seeing Workshop. War Chief, so kind of like Jund from Innistrad with like standard with like Olivia Voldarian Thrag Tusk, kind of akin to that. For those of you who played in that time frame, Run in Seven uh, provides some card advantage. You got the Chariot tokens with that, and then you have Titan of Industry on the top end. Um, Unleash the Inferno was the card I was mentioning. Uh, and then you just got like against the aggro decks, more War Chiefs, Lolf to grind out, burn down the house for creature matchups. Inferno has just more advantage. You got meat hooks in there. There's two meat hook main, another one there. Mono white, you got the rays. You got the duresses in there. Even against like Hinata, Raven, Feebleman's really good. 
uh, hitting that. Another ob for the grindier control style matchups. Uh, a little bit of everything in this deck. We have Esper midrange, Esper walkers um, kind of way. So really the cards that we're seeing from the new set played in here. We have Rafine Scheming Seer. Uh, lets you connive, so kind of churn through duplicate copies of, say, your Planeswalker. So it lets you play more legendaries, and then that turns it into just virtual card advantage. Uh, it's an evasive threat with some built-in protection to it. Um, plays really nicely with something like Tenacious Underdog that you could ditch and then get it back um, with its Blitz from the Graveyard ability. And then it's pretty much in the black-white Planeswalker shells. you got your Wedding Announcements, Wandering Ember, Soar, and Lulth. You're also playing a copy of Elspeth here that can help dig for these other spells. Um, this one's heavier on the Esper mana, and then in their sideboard, you're basically playing Malvin Hermit as a way to have some counter, and then we're seeing a lot of these same type of effects. Raven Feeblemate, Portable Hole, Check for Traps is Discard, more Meat Hooks. Actually, no Meat Hooks main, so just Meat Hook in the side for this particular version. Uh, and lastly, Orzov Angels. So Angel's got a boost with Giada Fonta Hope, so this deck in Standard was for the long time missing a good 2-drop in uh, Explorer, Historic, and Bishop of Wings that kind of enables that synergy. Giada does a similar role in the terms of it needs to be killed or it generates a ton of value. Uh, it ramps you to 4 drops if needed, uh, it can fix your mana, it, it makes each angel come in with scaling a power and toughness, uh, even just a 2-mana two, 2-2 two two, two, two Flying Vigilance. Just being able to poke at Planeswalkers and stuff is really good. Uh, this version is playing Guardian of Faith for like a sweeper protection. You have Inspiring Overseer that lets you cycle itself while being an angel. So kind of playing with the theme. Verge's Retribution gives you an angel. Uh, it could serve as removal as well as give you double strike. You're on the Wandering Emperor plan. Liaza lets you recycle stuff. You get to really take advantage of Amiria's Call in this particular deck. Uh, interesting, you're seeing Great Hall of Starheim, and a lie if I didn't tell you I needed to read this card. Uh, sacrifice it sacrifice it and a creature you control. Create a 4-4 Angel Warrior toy with Flying and Vigilance, and you can only activate it as a sorcery. I'm going to question the inclusion of that land, to be honest, but uh, I would just play Creature Lands. They're much better without having to... like. I think 3 mana, sack a line, get a 4-4 four, four would be pseudo playable. The fact you have to sack one of your creatures too. Uh, when you're not making tokens, kind of seems a little iffy. It's not like you're doing wedding announcement shenanigans. Um, but very similar kind of sideboard package for this. Arkan of Amiria, Meat Hooks, Pithing Needle, I guess, for the control matchups, stuff like that. Um, and then there was a couple big tournaments this weekend. Um, so Crokey's had his tournament. Uh, 257 players. Um, so I'm not going to go through every one of these deck lists. Esper mid-range one, like the Planeswalker decks, but there's a bunch of cool decks here. There's like a mono-white mid-range shell. Um, there was like Is It Control Land Destruction with Bombardment. Um, yeah, Arcane Bombardment in here. So I'll link these. You can take a look. Um, they should have like win rate percentages and stuff like that for decks. Um, number of decks. Yeah, Esper mid-range. So Esper was really popular and effective. Um, Jun mid-range, not as effective. Naya Ruins had a good showing. Um, so you can kind of take a look at that, see what worked, what didn't. Uh, and similarly, we had the $500 Cash GG Tour tournament. Uh, this one had 163 players. I see Naya Ruins on top, but uh, cool is it mid-range deck with like Wandering Mind in there. Uh, All-Seeing Arbiter. Um, so kind of some value there. You got a bunch of different decks here. Um, so I'll link both of these. You can check out the deck list. You can import from here as well. For those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, MTG Melee is kind of the, if you want to play online tournaments for Arena, uh, you can register there. There's a lot of tournaments that are held with like direct invites to uh, the PTQ if you win them, cash prizes, stuff like that. So definitely check those out as well, but I'll link everything together. Um, and then just let me know in the comments uh, what format you're playing most right now. I generally start off my weeks doing standard best of one and best of three and now I'll implement explore. Um, I don't know how many people are still playing historic to the same volume now that we have explore. Um, I'm assuming no one's playing alchemy given the fact that before explore came out my alchemy videos would get like no views for the meta and just the sample sizes were low. But um, Really kind of let me know what formats are the most popular for you, and uh, I try, I'll kind of tailor the schedule when I roll out these videos. 
In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one and stay safe out there.